how Usher's relationship with Chili, mistresses, and Jermaine Dupri led to confessions. It was all a lie. Dramatic? Sure. But not nearly as dramatic as the top-charting, jaw-dropping, less-filled stories of confessions Usher dropped on us back in 2004. The year Translucence, Chrome, and the futuristic Y2K began to dwindle, and also the year TLC's Chili departed from Usher's Playboy charm. At just 14 years young, Usher would go on to sign a recording contract with L.A. Reid's La Face Records before being handed over to So So Def's Jermaine Dupri, who lent his producer magic to Usher's debut 1997 project, My Way. Seven years later, Usher was presenting us with what would become his highest selling album to date, all thanks to the help of one third of TLC, Jermaine Dupri, and Usher's inability to keep it in his pants. In His Pants probably would have left him off the charts, a combination that just couldn't cut it for Usher's fourth studio album to have been as huge as it was slash is. Before Usher, John, and Luda did it again, Usher was just an aspiring singer with big hopes of becoming music's hottest commodity. Usher's talent was recognized at a young age when he participated in various singing competitions. At the age of 14, Usher caught the attention of A&R representative from La Face Records, Bryant Reed, who was impressed by his vocal abilities and stage presence. Reed was instrumental in helping Usher secure a recording contract with La Face Records, a label co-founded by Antonio L.A. Reed and Kenneth Babyface Edmonds. In 1993, Usher released his self-titled debut album, Usher, which showcased his R&B and soul influences. The album received positive reviews and achieved moderate success, but it was his second studio album, My Way, released in 1997, that propelled his career. My Way featured hit singles such as You Make Me Wanna and Nice and Slow, which topped the charts and solidified Usher's position as a rising star. The success of My Way caught the attention of music industry executives, and Usher's talent and potential were widely recognized. This led to a bidding war among several record labels who were eager to sign him. Ultimately, Usher chose to remain with La Face Records as he believed in a vision and support provided by Antonio Reed and Babyface. Usher's third studio album, 8701, released in 2001, further solidified his success. The album spawned the hit singles You Remind Me and You Got It Bad, both of which topped the charts and garnered critical acclaim. Usher's unique blend of R&B, pop, and hip-hop elements appealed to a broad audience, making him a crossover sensation. But it wouldn't be till his groundbreaking confessions, marking a departure from Usher's previous sound and into a more innovative, distinct one. The album featured collaborations with renowned producers such as Jermaine Dupri, Jimmy Jam, and Terry Lewis, and caught the attention of both loyal fans and new listeners, contributing to the album's widespread acclaim. His highly publicized relationship with Rosanda Chili Thomas, member of the popular girl group TLC, served as a major influence on the lyrical content and overall theme of the project, but not in the way you may think. Trust issues, infidelity rumors, and the eventual breakup became the foundation for the album's introspective and confessional nature, turning a sweet love story into an uber-messy publicized spectacle. Recognized as one of the best-selling girl groups of all time, TLC were already on their third leg, achieving back-to-back -back hits on the charts, while Usher was just getting his foot in the industry. During that time, Usher was just a wee youngin' and chilly around 21, juggling with a not-so-faithful relationship of her own. Dating film producer Dallas Austin took her through a whirlwind of emotions, to say the least. Even her son they had in 1997 couldn't stop him from stepping out of their relationship. And it got to the point where Chili was tired of being tired and had decided to pull the plug by the year 2000. On the other side of the industry, Usher was doing the dang thing, putting out the hits. One being You Remind Me off of his third studio album. Chili appears in the video as the ex-girlfriend all the other girlies reminded Usher of. And it would be on that set that Usher and Chili's relationship began. She also featured in his music video for his hit single, You Got It Bad. And by this point, it was evident that the chemistry between the two was undeniable. Rumors of a blossoming romance started circulating. However, they chose to keep their relationship rather private. 
leading fans to ponder about their status. But it wouldn't be long before suspicions were confirmed. From then on out, Usher and Chili would accompany each other to high prolific red carpet events, and Usher would utilize her as his future video girl from there on out. Despite their efforts to maintain privacy, Chili and Usher's relationship eventually became public knowledge. They were often seen holding hands and displaying affection towards one another. Meanwhile, ex-baby daddy Dallas wasn't here for Usher swooning in and taking his woman that was no longer his woman. Dallas let it be known that he was rather upset upon hearing that Chili was involved with Usher, stating that everybody was having their slice of his child's mother. Amongst being a film producer, Dallas was also a hit songwriter doing what artists do best, pulling inspiration from real world experience and soaking it into their craft. In Dallas's case, he'd taken his frustrations out in several breakup songs he'd written for some of the biggest hits like Blue Contrell's Hit 'Em Up Style, Cool by Gwen Stefani, and Pink's Just Like a Pill and Don't Let Me Get Me. As their relationship progressed, Chili gathered her belongings and settled into Raymond's residence with her son. This is where things took a turn for the worse. Moving in with anyone is already iffy as is, but moving in with your person you weren't even married to makes things even more sticky. Confiding in Rolling Stone Mag, Chili shared that she and Usher would fight over every little thing, so much so that over time it all came to a head and their relationship met its fate in late 2003. By this point, speculations of infidelity on Usher's end had risen, leaving Chili hot and Usher frantic. Going onto an Atlanta radio station, although it wasn't directly stated, more so insinuated that Usher had cheated, Chili told listeners that Usher had committed the ultimate no-no. Usher, on the other hand, was on mission damage control, calling into the exact same station to set the record straight, denying all speculations of cheating, insisting that he and Rosanda were in fact still friends. Despite initially denying the rumors, Usher hit us with the revelation or confession that he did in fact do what she had accused him of. To add some sugar on top of the bullish, supposedly wedding bells were ringing, supposedly. Whilst doing the deed one afternoon, Rosanda Chili Thomas was almost Rosanda Chili Raymond after Usher says he was ready to put a ring on it, insisting he had the box ready and everything. Confessions went on to sell millions of copies in just its first week. What should have been a historic celebration ended up mutating into a media frenzy, leading to further speculations about what really led to Usher and Chili's split. The second single from the album, Burn, went on to top the Billboard Hot 100 for eight weeks, with its third single, Confessions Part 2, preceding its position, taking the number one spot. When probed about its lyrics, Usher made the confession that despite what y'all was hearing or what was told, Confessions wasn't about none of that. In fact, Confessions wasn't even his story to tell. Usher was merely an artist playing a character, telling another man's story through his point of view. It may not have been his specific situation, but again, to add a little razzle-dazzle, he did state that a similar situation did happen to him and that he could relate to his album going on to say that he had some deep, dark ones stored away in the closet. So whose story was he telling? No other than the so-so deaf founder himself, Jermaine Dupreeze. Yep. Jermaine and his struggle cornrows were out here not only cheating on a quote-unquote woman he loves, but had all the nerve to knock up someone he had just met. The gist of the story came from having a girl and then meeting somebody else and having a baby with that girl, and then telling the girl that you're with, that you're having a baby by a girl you just met. Once that version of Confessions was finished, Usher and myself was all like, this is it, this is crazy. And then Usher was like, you can't stop right there. There's a part two to this story. And immediately, as soon as Usher said there's a part two, my brain clicked and every word of Confessions part two flew out of my mouth. Those lyrics for part two were something I had actually gone through in my life. They were a reliving of a situation. I just had to put in the right words that would make it fit for being Usher's story. Arista LaFace Records realized that fans mainly focus on Usher's music rather than his personal life. So Jermaine decided to create some whirlwind around Usher and use his and Chili's breakup as an opportunity to do just that. 
Confessions went on to score four number one hits with Yeah and My Boo, which were 2004's top best-selling singles, with the Confessions album spending nine weeks at number one on the Billboard 200 in the U.S., becoming the chart's longest running till 2009. Despite despising his guts at one point, over the years, Chili hasn't been shy about her deep platonic love for Usher. She even hit us with the confusing confession that Usher in fact did not cheat on her and that the two have remained friends throughout all these years. So what is the truth? Perhaps Usher's denial, then revelation, was nothing more than a marketing strategy for the album? Maybe he really did do what she said he did, and now she's backtracking further than Jermaine Dupri's hairline for whatever reason. Whatever the case may be, all in all, the success of Confessions can also be attributed to the timing of its release. The album arrived at a time when the R&B genre was experiencing a resurgence in popularity, with artists like Alicia Keys and Beyonce dominating the charts. Usher's compelling storytelling, combined with his undeniable talent as a performer, allowed him to stand out in this competitive landscape and solidify his status as one of the leading artists of his generation. The rumors and speculations surrounding his unmarried extramarital affairs added an element of scandal, intrigue, and personal turmoil to the album's narrative. Usher's willingness to openly address his mistakes and vulnerabilities in his music struck a chord with fans, making them feel connected to his journey of self-reflection and growth. Usher's confession stands as a testament of the influence a relationship can play in the marketing of one's craft, a strategy we've since seen time and time again. Through his introspective and confessional approach, Usher captured the hearts of millions, and although he was on top of his A-game pre-confessions, the 2004 album solidified his position as one of R&B's most iconic artists of all time, and Confessions one of the highest selling R&B albums of its decade. More like Jermaine Dupri's Confession. Let us know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments, and stay tuned for more True Celebrity Stories.